Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design custom Gloomhaven health and XP trackers. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And this is the first in a series of three deep dive videos talking about the techniques used in this project for creating custom Gloomhaven trackers made on a resin 3D printer. So this video focuses on the design process. And it starts in Adobe Illustrator. That's the drawing program I use. But everything you'll see me do, you could do in other drawing programs as well, including Inkscape, which is free. And then uh, I will import those files into Tinkercad, which is a free online 3D modeling software that's very simple to use. And because most of the work is done in the drawing program, there's very little modeling required when you get to the 3D modeling software. But I'll show you how to do that piece and then export the files to be used in a slicer like I use Chai 2 box as my slicer for my resin printing. So I'll talk about that whole process in this episode. I start the design in Illustrator and I use a picture of the actual dial as my reference. I want to make an outline of this tracker and there's a couple ways I could do it. I could do it using the pen tool, but I can also use shapes and Pathfinder. So I'm going to draw two circles that are the size of the ends of the tracker. And then I'm going to use the rectangle shape to draw a rectangle over it. Now I can select all three of these shapes and I can do the union in Pathfinder to make it a single shape. Now I want to get the notches out of the sides. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to draw two more circles and I'm holding down Shift and Alt so that I can draw this circle out from the center. And then I'm going to duplicate it and drag it down to the other end. And I'm going to use these to get those notches cut out of the other shape. So I put them in a group. I make sure that that group is in a layer above the tracker shape underneath. And then I'm going to fill these shapes because it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to fill the first shape with blue and this uh, group of two circles with another color, green. And then I'm going to select all three of these. Now that they're filled, it's easy to see the circles are on top. And then in Pathfinder, I say minus front. And now I have the outside shape of the tracker. I can remove the fill and use the rectangle shape to draw the windows. And now I can work on the number dials that go underneath. There are 27 numbers on each dial. And if you divide 360 degrees by 27, it's 13.333. So if I select the dial and I rotate it in the transform window by 13.3 degrees, it's going to turn just far enough for me to put in the next number. So that's basically what I did going from 0 through 26, is rotate the dial, enter a new number, rotate the dial. I worked on the right dial first, knowing if I got that finished, I could use that to create the left dial. On the right dial, the window's on the left-hand side, but on the left dial, the window's on the right-hand side, and you see the numbers are upside down. So the first thing you have to do is change these from being fonts to being outlines. So you do that by selecting them, and you can do this as a group, and go to Create Outlines, and it will turn it into a graphic element instead of a text element. Then you can select the group of numbers, and just the numbers. I'm not selecting the dial here, so you see the selection box gets smaller. And you go into Object, Transform, Transform Each, and then you're going to flip the angle 180 degrees to turn it upside down, and they all rotate to the right position. So now we have to put the holes in that will hold the dials. And we're using these screw rivets that I bought on Amazon. And they come in these nice little kits where there's one set of screws, 
but three different lengths of the other end of the rivet. The diameter of all these sleeves is five millimeters, so that's the size of the hole I put in the top. Now let's talk about the surface design. I need three elements. I'm using this Celtic circle. I use this symbol for XP, and I use this symbol for health. I look for very clean black and white clip art. And I do a file place to get it into Illustrator. And it puts this X over it to show that it is an image and not vector graphics, which is what you're going to be creating next. So by having this selected, I'm going to then open the image trace window. And this has some settings. You need to open the advanced options because there's one thing in here you should always check on a black and white uh, image trace, and that's ignore white, because if you don't do that, you'll get two copies of everything. And then you put preview on to make sure that it's doing what you expect it to do. And when you're happy with it, you say expand, and it turns it into vector graphics. When you first expand it, it's going to be all grouped together. But if you want to work with individual elements of it, as I'm going to, you need to ungroup it. So you select it and right click and say ungroup. And now all the little pieces are separate. You don't really want it at that level of detail either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just grab this element here at the top because I'm going to do some things with it in the actual design. So I select it, I unselect a few things that I got accidentally, like the circle and a bit of another component. Now I have just this unit I want, and I'm going to group that so I can work with it. I have to do an image trace on the other two images as well. And now I can lay it out the way I want it. I have my two circles. I use that element I pulled out in the middle. And I have my health symbol and my XP symbol. I know how to size this and lay it all out because the layer underneath it is that top I just drew. So I can get the placement of everything exactly the way I want it. And now all my components are drawn. I just need to save them out as SVGs. I'm going to save the design as one file. I'm going to save this profile of the top as another file. And my two dials are separate. And just the numbers here, I don't need the circles. I'll do that in 3D. There's one more step you have to do before you can save it as an SVG. You have to select it and go into Object, Compound Path, Make, and this turns it into a format that will work as an SVG. Then you can do Export As, and look through the list and find .SVG, and save it. And it's going to save it as an SVG file. Now the icon looks, it still says AI for Adobe Illustrator, but it's got these rounded uh, corners, it's a square. It visually looks different from a traditional AI file. I went through multiple iterations on each of these parts. The top started out at five millimeters thick and with a pretty shallow design. Then I made the whole top two and a half millimeters and a deeper design and finally went with an even deeper design on the top. I knew I needed to do this because I printed it at each step of the way. So this is the first iteration that's thick, and uh, it's hard to read the numbers in those deep little windows. So that's the main reason I went to a thinner version. And then I tried decorating it with some rub and buff, and it was hard to just get the design and not get it on the rest of the tracker top. So then that's when I decided I needed a deeper design, and that's when I ended up with this one, and it's fully assembled, and it works. I adjusted the size of the holes for the rivets as well. I did my 3D modeling in Tinkercad, and I started by importing a, one of my SVGs, and you have the ability to adjust the size of the model, and this is when I really finally made it the size I needed to fit on my printer bed. And just that easy, it imports a 3D model of the top. Now by default it comes in at 10 millimeters thick, and I know I don't want it that thick. So I can click on it and just change that dimension to, in this case, the final dimension, which is two and a half millimeters. 
And that's all it takes to make this part of the 3D model. I do exactly the same process with the design for the top. So I'm going to, now I, need, I know I need to make that a little bit smaller than the, the top it's going to be placed on. I'm not sure though exactly what size, so I'll just go a little bit smaller here. And it imports it. Once again, it's going to import it in at 10 millimeters thick, which is not what I want. So I'm going to need to make that smaller. But before I do that, I'm going to fiddle around a little bit here to get it the right size and in the right place. So I can click on the dimensions of the design just like I did the top. I can adjust those uh, to numbers that look pretty good. And then I'm going to make sure I'm looking straight down from the top and I'm going to move it around and see how it fits. Then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to look at a side view and start working on the placement and the height of the design. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the height of the design, but now it's embedded <laughs> in the, the top so I can grab that little handle there and pull it up out. I want to make sure it's in contact with the top and that it's the height I want it to be. Once I'm happy with that, I can select both components and then I group them, and that is the uniting function here in Tinkercad. It turns it into one piece. It all turns the same color because it's one model. For the number dials, I had to make the center hole bigger because it was too small. Then I found out embedding the numbers like this didn't work, so I had to raise them. To raise them, I had to put them into a channel. And then I made the numbers not bold, but the normal font. And finally, I made the whole thing thinner. I went through this evolution based on the printing that I did of each piece every step of the way. So the first dial was not only too big to fit under the top, the hole was too small. So I had to make those changes. And then I had to confront the fact that you really just couldn't read these numbers when you tried pushing them down in. So then I did the raised version with the channel and still it's a little fuzzy. Those numbers are too fat. So I went down to the normal font, not the bold, and I made it thinner. And this is the final dial that worked. So here's how I created the dials in Tinkercad. You use cylinders. You pull it out by default. It's uh, 20 by 20 by 20. And I changed that to the dimensions I needed. You're going to see me using cylinders a lot in creating these dials, sometimes as solids, sometimes as holes that I use to carve out circular holes in other parts. I'm smoothing the edges by increasing the number of sides by sliding that slider up into the 50 range. And this is my basic dial. Now I'm going to import the SVG that has the numbers on it. And I'm using exactly the same methods that we saw for the tracker top. I'm estimating the size. I know it needs to be smaller than the dial, but I'm not sure how much smaller. So I bring that in. It comes in 10 millimeters high. Um, I'm going to adjust the size of it. I'm going to move it into position. But I can't just leave them sitting on top of the dial because it won't rotate properly. I need to embed it in that channel so it's protected so that I can colorize the top of those numbers uh, through a variety of different methods that I'll show in my next video. But they'll still be protected in that channel and the dial will rotate freely. So I'm adjusting the numbers, I'm getting them in place because I need to use them as a reference for creating the channel that they're going to be set into. The first step of making the channel is to create a ring that is just big enough to contain the numbers still leaves an edge on the outside of the dial and the center and those surfaces are the ones that will control the rotation under the top. To create that ring I'm going to need two cylinders. One is going to be just slightly larger than the ring of numbers. The other is going to be just slightly smaller than the ring of numbers. So that green one there is the one that's going to be just bigger than the ring. And now I'm doing the second one that will fit inside the numbers. 
This will be the first time you see me using a cylinder really as a hole punch because the blue cylinder is going to be used to punch the center out of the green cylinder to turn it into a ring. I'm using the alignment tools a lot. I select everything, I pick a line, I hit the two center handles and everything gets centered. When I'm finally satisfied with the way the green ring fits, I'm going to pull the blue and green cylinders off to the side and then I'm going to pick the blue cylinder, I'm going to turn it into a hole, press it down into the green cylinder, and then when I do a group on these two, it's going to turn it into one shape with a hole in the center. That's my ring. I bring the ring back over, I realign everything, and now my ring is going to act as my hole. And I'm going to press it into the dial, but not all the way to the bottom. I don't want it to be a hole, I just want it to be a channel. So I have to adjust the height of that to where I want it to be. I group it, and now I have a channel. I pull my numbers back, I realign everything, and then I push the numbers down into the channel so that they are flush with the top. The last step is going to be to put the hole in the center that allows me to put the rivet in. And so I pull out a five millimeter cylinder and I'm going to push it down into the very center after aligning everything. I see it goes through the bottom, so it's all the way through. I group them and I have a hole for my rivet. Each of these components, the top and the two dials, are exported out of Tinkercad as STL files. And those are the files that we'll be pulling into our next video into Chai 2 Box, the slicer, to do our printing. I'm going to be printing these flat on the build plate, which can be very tricky to get released. I'm going to be using multiple colors of resin in a single print, and I'm going to show how I decorated these. So if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.